Saving in a 1% interest account means your money will take 72 years to double. That's almost a lifetime. I'll show you a single 5-second math trick that reveals whether your money is actually growing and what to do if it isn't. Do you want to know if your savings are really getting ahead of rising prices? The truth is, many people spend decades adding to their balance and still feel like they're stuck in place. Before you can speed up your money's growth, you need to understand why that happens, and it's more common than you might think. Millions of people set aside money for decades only to reach retirement and feel underwhelmed by what they've achieved. On paper, the numbers in their account are bigger, but when it's time to spend that money, it doesn't stretch the way they'd hoped. They weren't reckless. They saved regularly, avoided waste, and kept their money safe. Yet the results don't match the effort. Take a simple example. You set up an automatic transfer of $200 a month into a savings account and watch your balance grow steadily over the years. At the same time, everyday costs quietly rise. Groceries, rent, utilities, they inch upward so gradually you barely notice from one month to the next. But over time, the change is impossible to ignore. The $50 that once filled a shopping cart now only covers a week's meals. Your bank balance may be climbing, but the amount of real-life value it represents keeps shrinking. Many savings accounts pay around 1% today, while inflation can run multiple percent higher. That gap creates negative real returns. If your account earns 1% while prices climb 4%, your real return is minus 3%. In other words, every year your money's purchasing power drops. Even as the raw dollar amount kicks upward, it's the financial equivalent of walking up a down escalator. Your legs are moving, but you're still being carried backward. This problem gets worse over time because the erosion compounds. Just like interest can compound in your favor, inflation can compound against you when it outpaces your returns. Each year's loss in buying power makes the base you start from smaller, so the gap widens. After 10 years, a slow bleed of just a few percentage points can quietly strip away a large share of your money's real-world value. Now, think about this in terms of your savings doubling. At a 1% annual return, it would take about 72 years for your money to double in nominal terms. But if inflation runs at 3% during that period, the doubled amount won't buy as much. In fact, it may buy the same or even less than what you started with. Even earning 3% in a 4% inflation environment still leaves you falling behind in purchase power. This is why sticking to the so-called safe path of low-yield accounts can be misleading. Safety in terms of protecting your principal doesn't mean safety in terms of maintaining your wealth. Growth that lags behind inflation is a leak in the system. Gradual and silent, but damaging over the long run. And by the time you become aware of it, closing that gap takes far more time and effort than you expect. Once you strip away the illusion created by focusing only on the nominal return, the real picture becomes clear. To actually grow your wealth, your returns must at least match inflation and preferably beat it by a healthy margin. That's the only way time can start working in your favor instead of against you. So, how do you quickly figure out if your money is truly compounding fast enough to build real wealth? There's a simple shortcut a number that's been trusted for centuries that can give you the answer in seconds. It's called the Rule of 72, a simple mental shortcut first used by bankers and merchants over 500 years ago to estimate how fast money could grow long before calculators or spreadsheets existed. Despite its age, it remains practical today because it's easy to use, quick to calculate, and surprisingly revealing. The idea is straightforward. Take the number 72 and divide it by your annual rate of return. The result tells you roughly how many years it would take for your money to double. 
that's it. No advanced formulas, no complicated charts, just one division you can do in your head. Let's run through an example. If your investments grow by 10% a year, 72 divided by 10 equals 7.2. At that pace, your money would double in just over 7 years. If your return is 6%, 72 divided by 6 equals 12 years, almost twice as long. Here's a quick challenge. What if your account yields 3%? 72 divided by 3 equals 24 years? Seeing these numbers laid out makes the difference between rates of return much easier to grasp. This is where the rule of 72 shows its value. You can use it to picture how different returns might unfold over time and to check whether an investment matches your personal timelines. If you aim to retire in 25 years, you can instantly estimate how many doubling cycles fit into that period and what return is needed to hit your target. The difference between keeping money in a 1% savings account, 72 years for a single double, versus earning 8%, about nine years per double, becomes obvious over a working lifetime. That's the difference between one doubling and several, and the gap in outcomes can be massive. It's also an invaluable sanity check. If you review your portfolio and realize its implied doubling time is far beyond what your goals demand, that's a clear sign to reconsider your approach. The rule of 72 is a quick way to test whether your money is working hard enough without losing yourself in endless projections. It's worth knowing the boundaries of this shortcut. It's an approximation that's surprisingly accurate for annual returns, roughly between 4 and 15 percent. Outside that range, it becomes less precise, though still useful for quick reference. And it's important to remember that fees, taxes, and inflation lengthen your doubling time. The rule of 72 gives a fast, nominal check, not your final after-tax buying power result. The real magic, though, isn't in doubling your money once. In long-term investing, each double becomes the starting point for the next. This compounding effect means your third or fourth doubling produces far more growth than the first because you're building on a larger base each time. Over 30 or 40 years, the difference between one or two doubling cycles and five or six is the difference between modest savings and transformational wealth. Having this shortcut in your back pocket means you can quickly weigh almost any financial decision, from where to park your emergency fund to how aggressively to invest for long-term goals. But the speed of doubling isn't the only factor that matters. There's another advantage you can't buy later, and it's one that can outweigh even a higher rate of return. Think of it like planting a tree. Alex's seeds go into the ground earlier allowing roots and returns to spread unnoticed in the early years. By the time the later years arrive, growth accelerates because it's compounding on a much larger base. Jordan plants later, so their tree never reaches the same size, no matter how much water or money they add each month. This is the invisible advantage of time. It stacks the deck in favor of the early starter, even if they begin with modest sums. Compounding's exponential curve means the largest jumps in wealth happen near the end of your investment timeline when your balance is at its biggest. You don't see it in the early stages, which is why it's so easy to underestimate. Alex's final decade is the most productive, not because of higher contributions, but because the machine has already been quietly working for 20 years already. By then, the returns from earlier years are generating their own returns, creating a multiplier effect that later starters simply can't replicate. If you're in your 20s or early 30s, this example is your wake-up call. Small, steady amounts started now can beat much larger contributions made later. Time can be more valuable than money because it cannot be added back once it's gone. This also explains why time in the market is often called an investor's most valuable asset. Even in scenarios where returns are identical, duration tips the scales. 
Waiting to start is far more expensive than it looks. Those lost doubling cycles can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars over a lifetime. So if you're 20-something, small, steady amounts matter more than trying to play catch-up later. The earlier you start, the more chances your money gets to multiply. Of course, time is only half the equation. The growth rate you achieve determines how short each doubling cycle is. And shortening that cycle can transform your results. The choice of where to put your money plays a big role in how fast it grows and how well it can keep up with the rising cost of living. Imagine cutting your doubling time from decades to just a few years. That kind of acceleration comes from choosing the right growth engines for your money. Different assets run at very different speeds, and the rule of 72 makes those differences impossible to miss once you compare them side by side. Take a basic savings account earning 1% interest. 72 divided by 1 equals 72 years for your money to double. That's essentially a lifetime for a single doubling. And that's before inflation reduces its value. Contrast that with the S&P 500's historical average annual return of about 10%. Using the same rule, 72 divided by 10 equals 7.2 years, roughly 10 times faster than that savings account and a completely different long-term trajectory. In between those extremes, you have assets like short-term U.S. Treasuries. With recent yields near 5%, the doubling time is about 14.4 years. That's a noticeable improvement over cash, but it still trails the growth potential of a diversified stock portfolio. Real estate has historically averaged close to 8% annually in the U.S., which works out to a doubling every nine years, plus the possibility of rental income and the effect of leverage when financing is involved. At the other end of the spectrum are high volatility plays like Bitcoin. Over the past decade, it's delivered an average annual return near 90%, implying a doubling time of less than one year. Those numbers are historical and extremely volatile, so the rule of 72 doesn't predict whether you'll avoid big crashes. Prices can swing so sharply that gains may disappear in months. That is where understanding risk matters just as much as understanding return. A shorter doubling time only helps if you can stay invested long enough to benefit from it. A portfolio heavily tilted towards something like Bitcoin might see rapid growth in a strong run, but it also faces a high probability of severe losses. That's why some investors allocate only a small slice, even 1-2% to to these highly asymmetric bets, so they can participate in potential upside without risking the stability of their entire portfolio. On the flip side, keeping everything in treasuries or savings accounts might feel safe, but over time, it can mean losing ground after inflation. Return alone doesn't tell the whole story. Inflation quietly affects the real pace of wealth building. The rule of 72 gives you a nominal doubling time, but higher prices can stretch that timeline dramatically. Remember, if inflation is 4% and your nominal return is 6%, your real return is about 2%, and the real doubling time is much longer. Choosing your growth engines wisely means finding the mix of assets that matches your goals and your capacity for risk, while still giving you the best chance to outpace inflation. For some, that might mean anchoring part of their portfolio in stable, lower-yield holdings for security while allocating enough to higher growth options, like stocks or certain real estate investments, to keep the timeline competitive. The rule of 72 gives you a quick way to check if each choice puts you on track. The goal isn't chasing the shortest theoretical doubling time. It's building a portfolio that can deliver multiple healthy doubling cycles over the years with enough resilience to keep you invested through market ups and downs. With that mindset in place, you're ready to see how this simple mental shortcut ties together. The rule of 72 isn't just a quick mental trick, it's a practical way to see how time, return, and inflation shape your future wealth.
you can put it to work now. First, use it to check your current account. 72 divided by your nominal return equals years to double. Then compare that number to your goals and to inflation's impact, remembering that nominal isn't the same as real. If the timeline is too long, consider shifting toward assets that have historically outpaced inflation, with only a small slice in more volatile bets if you choose. Tell me below, what return are you assuming? And how many years does that give you with 72 divided by return? I'll read the most interesting answers. Start early. Pick engines that beat inflation and let compounding quietly work for you.